Hey everyone, welcome to this week's weekly missions roundtable with your West Coast Hub. We are back. We have Allie back with us. We she was missed. Allie, say hello. Hello. <laughs> our administrative assistant. We have our big boss man, Mike Pettingill. Say what up, boss. What up, boss? <laughs> it's like working. With, it's like working with an, a, a child again. You know what I mean? No. Uh, today we're going to be talking about. Am I too old for global missions? So often um, we have this Jeremiah complex, you know, which is, well, I'm too young to be used by God, but it, it also goes a different direction as well, which is, am I too old to be used by God? You know, I, you know, I feel like I'm too old, I'm, I'm too advanced in years to be used by God when it comes to global missions. So we want to talk about that and we want to address it. So. Let's go ahead and get started. Mike, what do you think? Is there an age limit when it comes to global missions? Why you got to throw the age thing on my shoulders like that right off the bat? All right, fine, I'll take it. Okay, even though this is a hint, it's a cro shot across my bow, I'll take this one as a very serious way to glorify Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. I hear a lot of folks uh, who are up there in age who battle the idea of missions. Um, the Western world has ideally prepared um, our, our older folks to, to get out of the mission field, whether it's retirements or pensions, um, but, but also the ability to add wisdom to a situation. Um, MTW does, a, I think, a really good job at um, preparing and getting seniors out into the mission field. Um, our seniors are set up with a, a partially funded uh, a support system when it comes to 401ks and 403bs and Social Security, and and uh, they can they're 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 already prepared to get out there on the mission field when it comes to finances. But the finances are not the issue that I want to focus on. It's the it's the ability to um, add the the wisdom and the experience that comes with age. Um, I've heard a lot of missionaries talk about um, whether the older missionaries uh, talk about whether they are um, seasoned missionaries or new missionaries that they're able to kind of bring a calm or a peace to a, a team that is is frantic or stressed, um, and and hopefully hopefully add some some wisdom whether it be um, cultural wisdom, um, missions wisdom, or or just just time and grade, just um, having lived on this earth and providing kind of a calming influence is my hope. Um, one of the things that older missionaries have told me that they struggle with is the, is the concern about acquiring a new language. They feel that because uh, of their advanced age, they can't do that. I, I, don't, I don't believe that so much. I, I think it can be done. Um, I think that there's it may take longer, sure, not a problem, but I think um, what I've seen on the mission field is when you have nationals that show, or you, you, when you show nationals that you're willing to try with a language, they're really willing to open up. Um, and so, yeah, you want to speak perfectly, but just speak, man, just communicate. Um, the thing that, that I want I want our older folks, our missionaries, our older missionaries and our senior missionaries potential senior missionaries to consider is um, what are you showing your grandkids and your kids um, that that ministry stops at a certain point in life and that you you only have to you only have to serve Jesus until you're 65 and then it's then you're done um, I'm going to paraphrase here but in in John Piper's um, book about um, don't waste your life. He, he has a chapter <clears throat> where he really focuses in on, on seniors getting out on the mission field. And he talks about the, um, the wisdom and the calmness um, and the different perspective that an older person can bring to the mission field. But what he really does is he put, comes at it from another direction and talks to, the, talks to the seniors about, um, biblically, there's no such thing as retirement, that biblically, um, um, what, what 
older folks have to do is they continue to serve. They serve as an example to younger folks that it, it, serving Jesus ends when your life ends and, and not before that. Um, and in his book, um, uh, Don't Waste Your Retirement was the one I actually meant to say. Uh, in his book, Don't Waste Your Retirement, he talks about, uh, he gives two, two examples. He says, he, says, um, he says, can you imagine anything more offensive than in your older years wasting them away by, by walking up and down a beach collecting seashells when you could be walking up and down uh, the shores of foreign lands collecting souls for the kingdom. And uh, he also goes on to say, say uh, how he talks to people who, who can't wait to, um, to play golf every day in, in, in retirement. And, and uh, Piper goes on and explains that it's just, just offensive to the kingdom that there you are wearing your funny little, little pants and, and, and smacking a little white ball around when you, when you can be glorifying the Lord. Um, I, I really want to encourage people. I, I don't care what age you are. Uh, I don't care if you've got grandkids. I don't care if you, if you are, um, uh, when, if, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 50s. If you're in your 50s or 60s or 70s, I don't care. I want you to prayerfully consider that, that the Lord has a place to serve you, has a place to use you in service. And that you can really um, add a lot to a missions team, and don't think that just because you're tired and your back aches, and you, you know, you know, you have financial freedom probably that a lot of the younger missionaries don't. Mm -hmm. And um, prayer, prayerfully consider um, how you can actively serve on the mission field. Um, yeah, maybe you're not going to play uh, hours and hours and hours of soccer with the kids on the field, or maybe you're not going to build walls with a with uh, concrete and, and, and cinder blocks. Um, but there's a lot of things that, that you can add uh, to the team. And I, I really want you to consider uh, as an older person getting on the mission field. Mm, that was good. And just like you said, you know, we're not expecting our, our elderly saints to go and, you know, build walls and play soccer for hours on end. I mean, if you can do it, then by all means, have at it. We're not going to stop you. But um, just some ways you can be involved is, let's say you said, hey, I, I just cannot health-wise, financial, I, I just cannot go overseas. Listen, we understand, that's fine. But there are things you can do even here at home to be involved in global missions. Being involved in the global missions isn't just about going, it's about being a good stayer, as someone said. I think it was Dr. Alex Jun who says, it's about being a good stayer too. So you can create fundraisers to help support missionaries. You can help schedule um, missionaries when they're on HMA to come, you know, talk at the church. You can help with the children and give the missionaries a night away. Or even if you do want to travel overseas, watch the kids so the missionaries can get some time away and really focus on their marriage. Um, there's just so many different ways that you can be involved that doesn't require uh, you going overseas. So just be open to what the spirit of God may be calling you to do and understand that God has a purpose and a plan for these golden years as they call it and you're an integral part of reaching the nations with the gospel it's not just a young person's or middle person's job it's the job of everyone from infant all the way up until uh, uh, old age as well. So uh, I'm going to pass the ball to Allie to bring us home. And I think the coolest thing about this is that the Bible is very explicit that youth are to be involved in even to people with the silver crowns that they wear, like our brother Mike has a silver <laughs> crown of wisdom. Yes, <laughs> but to use that, and it's so cool looking through the Old Testament, and of course, people don't live as long as people were living in the Old Testament, but God used uh, older people to do some pretty incredible things, and the obvious example is to go to is Abraham, if we just hop over to Hebrews 11, 17 real quick, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering, uh, offering up his only son, of whom it was said, through Isaac shall your offspring be named. He considered 
that God was e was able even to raise him from the dead, from which figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. This didn't happen when Abraham, Abraham was 17 years old. He and Sarai had been waiting, uh, and they, they conceived when they were in their mid-80s, and then, and then God used them. It wasn't in the prime 20, 21 to 35-year-old time span, but God used a lot of people over a long, a long um, periods of time for his glory to work things out for his beautiful purpose. And he will do the same in missions. There we go. There we go. So listen, if you're interested in how you can be involved in these golden years of life, click the Get Started link above. If you're watching via Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, look below, uh, get the uh, Get Started form. One of us will reach out to you. We will gladly uh, walk with you through this process. And my older missionaries, just like I school these two all the time, Listen, man, this is all about wisdom right here. So I want my older missionaries out on the field. It is better to burn out than fade away, my brothers. And hey, that's a good point. I like that. It's better to burn out than fade away. I mean, yeah, cool, cool. All right, y'all. Listen, we love you. We'll catch you guys next week. And uh, we pray that you guys be well. God bless. Bye.